Hi everyone, it's Victoria Field, co-host of Metabolic Health Summit, and we have a very, very special guest today, John Wood, the founder of US Wellness Meets. I am so excited that he's joining us today. John, thank you so much for sitting down and chatting with me. Victoria, thank you for the invitation. Honored to be part of your uh, growing movement and excited to be part of the uh, event coming up here at the end of January, Metabolic Summit. Should be a super, super uh, way to start 2020. It absolutely will be. And we're so thankful for your support. It wouldn't be possible. This scientific movement really around metabolic health, food, and the importance of the daily choices that we make wouldn't be possible without brands like yourself uh, really supporting our mission. And you guys have a pretty incredible mission yourself. Part of the reason I'm so excited to be partnered with US Wellness Meats, you've done incredible work for farmers, uh, for cattle, for the environment, for the people who love your products. And it's really got a, a pretty interesting history. I mean, US Wellness Meats is owned and also run by family farmers. Uh, you guys have farms in Missouri as well as um, Tasmania, which I think is really interesting and we'll kind of dive into that, um, as well as sort of like a cooperative of family farms around the country, um, all of which are grass fed. And we'll get into some of those specifics, which I think are really important when it comes to nutrition. But talk a little bit about the history of U.S. Wellness Meats and why you felt that we needed to have this kind of a company in the world. My story is interesting. I got exposed to uh, regenerative agriculture uh, really about 1992. I go back a long time in this, in this story. But I read a book by Alan Savory, who it's the title is Holistic Resource Management. Mr. Savory is still alive. He resides in Zim, Zim, Zimbabwe right now. Fascinating character. He was a uh, West, uh, is a Sandhurst graduate, which is equivalent of our West Point in British military history. He was a special forces soldier in the British Army, and he was also trained as a biologist. And after his military stint, he was uh, dropped off in Rhodesia, which was at the time was a British colony, and he was asked to stop desertification. And uh, there's a river in, in Rhodesia, looks a lot like the Missouri River, uh, highly eroded banks, a pretty awful landscape. And it took him several years to figure out how to reverse that, which he was able to do. And he uh, figured out uh, what had gone wrong. And uh, so he actually has a TED Talk, which I would encourage your listeners to take a look at. Type in Alan Savory, S-A-V-O-R-Y. It's been viewed by millions of people. And it's a great little clip of uh, what he's all about. And after reading that, uh, I was a, I'm a fifth generation Missouri farmer. My ancestors were very knowledgeable people. Uh, I got a good mix of state senators and state reps and good leadership, and we had kind of a flagship farm in northeast Missouri, but we were doing commodity agriculture, commercial beef cattle production, and we were losing market share due to uh, packer uh, control and, and uh, mon monopolizing the energy or monopolizing the industry. So I kind of combine Alan Savory's uh, land research and, and, and landscape uh, uh, preservation with Mike Theresa, and then 1995 was the onset of the internet. And I'm kind of an off the edge of the plate Scotch Irish uh, pioneer, and I thought, you know, if we could sell this grass fed meat direct to the U.S. consumers via the internet, this would be a, a direct uh, direct sale. So I had no idea how difficult that was going to be to do. I was kind of a braveheart, so to speak, from <laughs> my ancestors that actually go back to the Bruce family in, in Scotland. I still got a true story. So, but anyway, um, we messed around with this concept. I actually had meetings two years in a row in 19, about 1994, 1995. I brought an educator in and we talked about the principles that Alan Savory taught and the founding members of the meat company all came out of the school. So we were charged with trying to use grassland to improve our way of life, improve our rural communities, improve the health of consumers, and improve the landscape. That was kind of the, the premise. And um, April of 2000, we kicked off the first meeting. I invited 12 people, only six showed up. So we <laughs> lost about half the workforce of the first day. But um, we took off on a, on a task to do this. And uh, we harvested uh, the first animals in November. We turned a website on November the 7th. And, uh, and I didn't realize what I was getting myself into because at the end of the first year, we had 45 orders in, the, in the November and December of 2000. Only two people we didn't know. So then we realized that the internet, you know, is a great tool, but you have to have trust and respect that people are going to spend money. And so 
Uh, luckily, in 2001, we stumbled across Dr. Joe McCullough, who has a very well-known uh, uh, health and wellness website, and we were uh, uh, honored to have Dr. McCullough select us to be a supplier. Very first thing he ever did was sell grass-fed meat. That was uh, in August of 2001. So that relationship uh, was commenced, and that really kind of helped save us, to be real honest about it. Wow. He gave us a pretty good shot in the arm. And, um, but, you know, we, um, you know, we went through some testing phases. 1997, we harvested the first animal. We couldn't believe that, you know, the grass-fed animal was tender, had a great flavor. We sat around at you know, a barbecue grill one night. We just didn't believe it uh, from the Show Me State of Missouri. So we had to do this again. We did it again in 1998, and we couldn't believe it two years in a row. And then the third year, we sent samples off to Iowa State and University of Illinois to do the lab work to look at the omega-3 levels, omega-6 levels, CLA levels, and all these levels came back on as they've been advertised. We had this ratio of omega-6 to 3, which was about 2 to 1, 3 to 1. Commodity beef was about 18 to 20 to 1, omega-6 to 3. We get way too many omega-6s, and the CLA levels were where they should have been. They were much higher in, in a grazing animal. What Mother Nature does, which is really interesting in this, in, in, it's, you can take the beef animal, the lamb, the dairy animal, and the bison, they all four are ruminant animals. They have a four-chambered stomach. And the first chamber of the stomach is a fermentation vat. And Mother Nature designed it to run at pH 7. Uh, that's kind of the forage digesting mode. If you take that same fermentation vat and fill it full of grain, which is most of the animals in the United States are grain fed, the pH goes down to four and a half or five and a half, very acidic. Well, the, the, the fermentation bacteria, there's over a billion bacteria in this bushel basket size rumen. And the, uh, the, when, the, when you change the bacteria from seven to four and a half or five, you change the entire suite of fatty acids. So you go from uh, you know, pH seven to pH five and a half. You, you go from, uh, that's when you, when you put the omega sixes to the, to the root. And, and what some grass fed producers will do, they'll keep these animals on grass for 200 days. In the last 30 days, they make it need to feed them some grain in order to get the flavor, which is completely false. And by doing that, 30 days of grain will negate almost all the goodness you've done with 200 days of pure grass-fed uh, finishing. So uh, as soon as you put the grain in, the CLA numbers start to fall off, and the omega-3s omega start to fall back, and the omega-6s go up again. So it's important not to ever put any grain in those animals. Starch just ruins everything. Right. <laughs> um, well, it, it's a really interesting point you make because I don't know that a lot of people really understand the difference um, that you just mentioned between grass-fed and grain finish and the difference you might get when it comes to fatty acids, when it comes to omegas, when it comes to CLA, like you mentioned. And that's something that's really important um, for the consumer to be aware of when they go out and, and purchase um, these products. And that's why you guys make it so easy. Uh, the thing I love is that you offer such a wide spectrum of products. I mean, we're talking, you know, beautiful beef products, fat, organ meats, all the things that keto heads love um, to, you know, pork, duck, chicken, a, a variety of things that really make it easy for people to stick to quality products. The other thing I absolutely love about the mission behind U.S. Wellness Meats um, is sustainable farming, it's sustainable and humane farming. That's something that is is so important. Um, and I, I think uh, you, you said the quote, it's a real simple recipe, know your food, know your farmer, and you guys work with farmers that are doing it right. Um, explain what that means when it comes to sort of having these grazing periods for cattle and what that can do when it comes to soil erosion, what that means for flooding, what that means for sort of this ecosystem being almost like a natural carbon recycler, if you will. I think a lot of people uh, maybe misunderstand the importance of supporting a business like yours, U.S. Wellness Meats, when it comes to not just the health of the animal, not just the health of us as humans eating those products, but also the planet as a whole. It's really exciting where some of the information is leading us. So talk a little bit more about that specifically when it comes to grazing and the importance of that. Victoria, there's three key words. It's rest, rest, and rest. <laughs> uh, we talk about humans have to have six or seven hours of sleep every night. Your land actually needs to be under rest mode as well. So we like to give our pastures 30 to 45 day rest. We, we graze intensively for 24 to 48 hours. We take the animals off the landscape and they, you know, they don't return again for 30 to 45 days. If you can imagine mowing your yard once every 30 to 45 days, you'll get the, you'll get the picture. Right. And after you do this for three or four or five years, what happens is there's a, there are more 
microorganisms below ground than you can imagine. In a tablespoon of soil, there's a billion microorganisms. Just hard to imagine these little enzymes and ciliomycetes and mycorrhizal fungi. The mycorrhizal fungi are neat little critters. Uh, they actually help the plant. When the plant leaves are growing and they're getting longer every day, they capture solar energy. They're taking sunlight, photosynthesis, and they're catching carbon out of the atmosphere. Carbon goes into the plant and the mycorrhiza fungi actually attach to the roots of the plant. And these are the little guys that actually turn atmospheric uh, carbon into stored soil carbon, which is or or organic matter. And it's, it's the easiest way to protect the planet is to increase grasslands around the world. We need to increase grasslands in Africa, North America. And uh, if, if you go back to Africa before man became involved, you get up uh, in northern northern Africa, there were, there were zero deserts. Uh, you can go to Saudi Arabia, you can go to Libya, you can go to Jordan and Syria and Iraq. Those were all grasslands. And in Baghdad, it would rain 50 inches a year, but it fell in three months and the other nine months were dry. Well, the, the, the animals, all the herbivores, which were the gazelles, the, you know, the zebras, uh, and uh, you know, uh, I can't rattle off all the, all the African game animals, but they always lived in a bunch because they were being attacked all times by the predators. And the predators were actually the land managers, the lions, the tigers, the cheetahs. And so these herbivores, they, they slept in a bunch, they grazed in a bunch, and they, and they would move you know, every day somewhere. And so the predators only picked off the old, the young, and the sick, and the injured. So that was a pretty neat system. And they were the carbon cyclers. They were able to manage the, you know, we call nutrient flow for the soil. You have sunlight, you have water, you have energy. And those are the three things that drive plants. So what's fascinating, on, in 1998, I started doing this on my own property. And I literally double, triple, quadruple the production capacity of my farm in doing so. And it was amazing. Every year, you had more grass. Where did all this grass come from? But as the roots go deeper in the soil, they, they bring up minerals from further down. They take carbon out of the air. And it's, it's, what, it's what the Great Plains was like in the 1700s. Why would you say it's important for you know, the consumer, the athlete, the patient, the physician, the, the everyday person to really, when they you know, choose their products, their meat products, um, to really think about some of these factors in the process, whether it's grass-fed, and grass finished, whether it's, you know, sustainable farming, supporting, you know, what you're doing uh, with your cooperative of farmers, as well as what you have in Missouri and Tasmania. Uh, what would you say to somebody who is sort of on the fence about that um, from your own perspective? Well, it's really interesting. I've run across lots of folks in the last 20 years who have made dramatic changes in their health. And if you go to the grocery store and you pick up almost any item in a grocery store, if you read the label, the ingredient deck, you're gonna see 10 or 15 items on that ingredient deck. And our, our claim to fame is probably the shortest, simplest labels in the industry. I mean, our plain beef jerky has only one item, sea salt. Our, our number one seller is, is a pork bacon and the only ingredient is sea salt. There's nothing else in there but sea salt. So in fact, this week we are introducing a new, we're gonna call it beef comma organ grind. We have a new recipe, it's 40% ground beef, 20% liver, 20% heart, 20% kidney. And it's amazingly good tasting. We it's amazing. <laughs> so we think that'll be a, you know, that'll be a new thing we just introduced. And we introduced Keto Burger two years ago, which is 45% fat and 55% lean. My, my head meat guy just laughed at me and he doesn't laugh anymore. <laughs> oh, right, because that's flying off off the shelves for you guys, I'm sure. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, but I was surprised at how tasty. I mean, it's 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 just fantastic. I mean, you would if if I blind tasted people, they would never have a clue there was organ meats in it. I mean, you really can't taste the liver, you can't taste the kidneys. It's amazingly how good it tasted. And you get all the benefit at the same time, exactly. which is exactly. great. I can't wait to try that. I know the product you were talking about, beef jerky. Like it is so challenging to find a product like yours that doesn't have a bunch of added ingredients, sugar specifically. And I just have such an appreciation. I know we had a great conversation around that. Um, and I also did with Drew, just how that sets you guys apart from the rest. Do you really understand that, you know, quality meat is going to sort of speak for itself. Add a little bit of sea salt, but besides that, you, you really don't have to do anything to your products because they are so quality. Food is a powerful tool that is really often underutilized. And, it's going to be pretty exciting um, as a farmer to see where our, you know, where this is headed. And I mean, how does it, it your perspective of the future of farming, where does that lie for you um, being a farmer yourself? If you go back and look at the planet, uh, you know, 
500 years ago, you know, we had a lot more green plants on the planet. And I think that's, that's the focus that I like to see take place. We're still going to have to produce, you know, I think 50% of the population doesn't really care where their food comes from. It's just kind of hard for the facts of it, but they're cheap every time. And so we still have to maintain a supply for the for what I call the masses that really don't care about their longevity. And I'll be real blunt about it. But for those half of us that do care about it, I think we need to have more choices and uh, more the variety and uh, and just like this organ sausage, I would have never dreamed 10 years ago we'd be selling 40% you know, lean beef and, and 20, 20, 20 liver heart kidney mix. I would have never, never dreamed that. But, but that's where the market's going. But we have to start building tops. And if you go to Grassman Exchange, you'll see a lot of interesting articles about that. We have all, all the lectures that we have every year, those are all on their free of charge. So if you really want to you want to study Don Huber, all of his speeches are there, Abe Collins and Gabe Brown. And so there's a number of people out here advocating change. Um, and there's a growing movement that are, that's involved in that. But we also have to be able to support those folks by buying those products. We have to we have to wrap our arms around those great people trying to go against the grain. But, well, what's what's the future for U.S. Wellness Meats? What is your dream, your vision, uh, moving forward? Well, I hope to maintain that my my son's interested in the business, and you know I think he'll carry on in my footsteps. And uh, I've got a really good staff, really good people here. You know, there's a lot of consolidation going on and you look around you, you know uh, epic was gobbled up by uh, by general mills and catalogs you know gobbled up our x cars and, and mark systems sold primal kitchen you know a lot of people are trying to cash in and there's a lot of investor money chasing this food thing right now but i'm uh, i'm 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 a happy guy trying to you know maintain my uh, status in the world and uh, trying to provide good food for a good price and i'm preaching that we need to grow more sustainable foods uh, you know you know, if you look at past civilizations, there's a lot of civilizations on this planet that failed. And if you look at what happened to them, it's just poor use of land. I mean, the Roman Empire was really collapsed. Uh, soil erosion, if you, you know, they have some few things politically, but the Romans actually went into Northern Africa to raise wheat to feed the empire. You can look at satellite photos and there are areas in, in the Northern Africa coast that you can still see the damage that happened, you know, back when the Romans tried to do this. And so, you know, there's all kinds of civilizations, uh, and like the Mayans and, and the Mexico, it seems strange. That's a that's a humid, temperate climate, and how they screw that up. That I think it was just poor use of land. And so, the real nexus of the whole thing is we need to we need to preserve topsoil. We can then, like I'm growing topsoil, but uh, you know, modern agriculture is growing cover crops. Even the even the commodity people are starting to realize that the real trick on soil is to have a green crop out here every month of the year. Uh, like I look around this community now, the soybeans are being harvested. But there's people that actually will put a, a cover crop of rye, which will grow up in the soybeans, and then it will grow up in the winter and in the spring. And by having green plants actually catching sunlight every possible day of the year, that's how you build soil. And, and the monoculture, uh, corn and soybean, too many of these guys plant one crop a year. It's active from May through September, and then it's gone. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just a dead plant out there. So, but the consumer, after 2006, we noticed a dramatic change in questions that came out of our customer base. And we get interrogated every day about our labels and, you know, really, really hard, you know, scientific type questions people come up with. You know, they're, they're asking a lot more questions about what they consume. So but my, my, my advice is, is look at the label. If it's more than three ingredients, it's probably something you shouldn't buy. That's a pretty good uh, standard to set. And, and the great thing is you're getting all these calls, but you don't have anything to hide. You provide quality products. You've got an incredible foundation for how you do farming and who you partner with. And you really take a lot of pride in those partnerships as well. So, you know, I think it, it's an exciting time to have people be so inquisitive about food and have a brand like U.S. Wellness Meats who's doing it the right way. So, and it's all tied into our metabolic health, the health of the planet, the health of animals. And I just have so much respect for the way you're doing it. Um, and I love the products that you have as well. So there's that too. And the, and the great thing is you guys ship all over the States, all 50 States, Puerto Rico, Canada, and people can just go online and, and find these products. And, and you guys have kindly provided our Metabolic Health Summit attendees and followers with 15% off, which is amazing if you use the code MHS20. You know, it's, it's gonna be a fun year. I'm looking forward to 2020. And, uh, but I, it's, it's just amazing the support we get from all different portions of the globe. And we've been able, like I say, we've been able to ship anywhere in the country. And we've learned, we're actually got a, we're gonna have some new packaging coming out. We finally found a, uh, a green uh, cooler, which we're in the process of trying to get. We got two companies we found with our testing that we can do away with, hopefully, the styrofoam the first quarter of 2020. And 
And we were actually going to offer a subscription uh, model. We've been working on that for several months. And so the folks that don't like to be bothered with making the order, we're gonna, you're going to have a choice on the website. You're going to be able to plug in a subscription order and it's every two weeks or four weeks, whatever you want to do, and you'll be able to change those. And oh, I guess our, our differentiator is going to be we've got 385 choices, and most of the subscription companies have maybe 20 or 30, so you're going to have a lot more variety. But I, you know, I'm a little bit old-fashioned. I'd just rather make my own orders, but I... Come to the realization that a lot of people are too busy to do that so they almost want to be a, want to have an automated process so we're in the process of making that happen as we speak so that's great oh my goodness that's wonderful and people can find more information at grasslandbeef.com where you can just explore their website you've got really great uh faq section um some great videos on there uh, even some educational stuff on cuts of meat that i think is really really helpful and i just love what you guys are doing and, and we're so appreciative of your support of metabolic health summit 20 20 because it wouldn't be possible without you to put conferences on like this to continue to push the science forward but it also wouldn't be possible to follow a, a quality ketogenic diet without you know the farmers the, the people that you're bringing together to make this happen so thank you well we're uh, thank you very much for your compliments and we're honored to be part of your part of your event in January look forward to being out uh, on the west coast good time of the year to leave the midwest to go to go to sunny California <laughs> And yes. uh, look forward to meeting the people you're going to have involved. It's a, quite a starcast group of folks that are going to be attending. And uh, so we should have a lot of fun. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you. And you'll be able to try U.S. Wellness Meats firsthand because they're actually going to be incorporated into the experience. You'll definitely have to come on out to Metabolic Health Summit. Find more information. Get your early bird tickets, metabolichealthsummit.com. And John, thank you so much for spending so much time with me today and diving into all of these fun topics and sharing U.S. wellness meets with our followers. It's been fun. Thank you very much.